welcome to Tune In Tuesday at 2. So there's two things I want to do today. One, I want to give you a really quick tour of the seven art supplies that I literally use every single day, particularly right now because I'm putting together my collage joy class, which is all collage, obviously, uh, but it's all, it's, it's what I used as I created collage kickstart as well, how I'm going to do it going forward. Okay. So let me show you my seven essential art supplies and then I'll do the art demo. So I'm going to be taking you off my little stand here. So give me two secs. And here is my art demo area. By the way, some of you have asked me about this lamp. This is called a Canva lamp, canvas lamp. And it is absolutely amazing. Actually, I'm setting it up right now. You just put your camera, or, yeah, my phone right on it. And it just, it's an incredible uh, tool for filming. So if any of you want to film your, uh, your art, this is the way to go. So my seven essential art supplies start with tissue paper. So this is the tissue paper I use for all of my, I'm going to see if I can make this bigger, for all of my art. And I get it from Uline in the United States. You don't have to get it from here, but someone asked me yesterday exactly what I was ordering, and this is it. It's 18 by 24, 10 pound white tissue paper. And it's a huge piece of paper, and I cut it down into these, I guess that would be 9 by 12 sheets, because this is a really good size to file. Um, and by the way, I'm going to be showing my exact filing system in Collage Joy. So this is, unfortunately, when you buy from Uline, you buy a thousand sheets at a time, which makes it very economical. I take these huge sheets, which are 18 by 24, I cut them in four. So I get, a, I mean, this is like, you know, a two or three year supply for me. And they end up being like each one of these sheets is like less than a, a penny. So it's very economical. The other way of doing it, if you're not going to do as much as I do, is to get Spectra tissue. Uh, they're pretty equal to me. This costs you about 10 cents a sheet. I guess if you cut these in four, it's going to be more like three or four cents a sheet. So it's not that much more expensive, but I just use it in volume. So I use the uh, heavy, heavy, heavy user version. So that's number one. Number two is most of my art, at least in the last couple of years, has been put on this paper. It's Strathmore mixed media paper. How much poundage is it? This is 184 pounds. These are 18 by 24 sheets. It's pretty big. <clears throat> and I can just cut them up. And I cut them up by the size that I need. Sorry. <clears throat> of course, my, my throat gets all clogged up <laughs> talking to you. Uh, I haven't talked all day. So this paper is, it's kind of like watercolor paper. It's very, very thick. I take a lot of abuse. I also use watercolor paper. I particularly love um, either 140 pound, but 300 pound is the ultimate because it's really, really heavy. But I tend not to go for that because it's much more expensive. This is very economical to use. That's number two. Number three, this sounds so mundane, but these shop towels are to die for. Um, you know, paper towels are great, but this is one, incredibly good for the environment because you can use them zillions of time. And I mean zillions. So these shop towels, this one right here, this is probably a year old. I have used this so many times. And what I'll do is I use it for whatever I need it for. You know, I'm mopping things up or I'm <clears throat> you know, blotting off uh, water from a, a, a piece of art. And then I just throw it in the sink, wash all the paint out, and then I lay it. I have uh, shower curtains that I lay out on my studio floor and I just lay them back out like this. They dry and they're perfect. So I probably have a dozen uh, going at any one time. This one, uh, this one uh, roll, I've had this for over a year because, and it's still like a lot in it because I don't use it because I don't need to. I just keep using these. So that's number three. Number four are my brushes. Uh, I have a real, uh, I'm just in love with Princeton brushes. So just the Princeton brand, and I've used, they have a lot of uh, kind of subcategories of, of brushes, but these are my favorites. I have probably a dozen of these flat brushes because the flat brushes are the ones I actually do almost all my gluing with. Um, this is phenomenal for blending. I have a lot of smaller ones for detail work, although I don't do a lot of detail work. This is my new favorite brush of all time. It's called a Filbert. 
I don't know why I love this, other than the fact that it holds the head really well. It has like a, a tapered head to it. It just, and it glues small areas really, really nice. And then you have to have a round brush because this is really good for splatters, you know, when you want little dots everywhere. But I've got, I don't know, probably a hundred different brushes. And I've just recently learned from the amazing Kelly Conrad, Kelly Wynn Conrad, I know a lot of you know her. Uh, she uses Princeton brushes as well, but you can get Princeton brushes that don't have the paint coating on here. So these are all coated. And the more I use them, that paint, like this one, all of the, it's now it's just bare wood. So you can get them so they don't have painting on them, you know, a paint coating, which makes them last longer. So I don't have them yet, but the next time I order brushes, I'm going, I'm just going to spend a little, little more money and get those because then I don't have all the paint chipping off. I think that was number I have no idea. Five? Uh, that was four. Now, so this is the glue I use. It's matte medium. Now, uh, the gel medium and the matte medium, this is just more liquidy. I consider this the same thing. So I use this for papers that have a little more substance to, substance to them. So I need a little more, um, you know, it just needs a little more uh, tooth <laughs> in gluing it down. But a lot of my papers get this. A lot of all my tissue papers get glued with this because it's very liquidy. Um, and I put them in these condiment bottles. So this is just something I get off Amazon. I think I bought a dozen of these. And that means I can just like pour down my glue without having to do a lot of, uh, I don't want to have to pour it out of a bigger bottle. But I love this stuff. And actually, this is the product that I used for last week's demo uh, for um, encasing tissue paper. This works, to me, it, this is my favorite product for encasing tissue paper. And number six is gesso. Now, hold on a second. So this is actually how I buy it. <laughs> it's you'll, I don't know how you say that. You'll trick professional grade gesso. Um, I put it into this smaller jar of it. And this is also what I use for my white paint. So instead of, I, this is the same uh, color is titanium white. I just use gesso instead. And I just found out from Golden, by the way, when I show things like Liquitex, to me, that's interchangeable with Golden. I think they're both fantastic, but sometimes you can get a better deal on Liquitex, so which is why I often have that instead. I just go for whatever the cheaper one is. But I just found out from Golden that when you are, a lot of people use gesso to uh, prime their canvases, or they're, I'm, in my case, I prime my paper. So that mixed media paper, I will put a coat of this on the front and the back, and that keeps it from warping. Um, however, um, you also can do, what, I, what Golden told me just the other day, is that ideally you wanna put gloss medium down first, a coat or two of gloss medium, let it dry, and then put the gesso. And that's supposed to, uh, keep things from yellowing long term, so it'll be more archival. So I'm, I haven't done that yet, but that's my next thing on the hit parade, is to try that. Because I'm about to make a bunch of collages for Collage Joy, so I was going to prepare my uh, substrates like that. And number seven is just a water bottle. It's so simple, but I use this constantly. Like every collage, every paper I make, always gets squirted with water because it just makes so much, so many cool effects. Um, I got this one from a hardware store, but I've had, you know, dozens of them. I have little ones. I have big ones. I have travel ones. This is an essential item in my, in my repertoire. So that's my, that's my art supplies. And again, I've got a list of 33 that actually comes as a graduation gift when you finish Collage Kickstart. So you'll get that when you do Collage Kickstart. Now on for the demo. So many of you have uh, gone through Kickstart or are going through it, and I believe it's day four that I talk about doing glue relief papers, and they look like this. So you put little dots or designs of glue down, you let it dry, and then you put paint on top. So the two products that I suggest are tar clear, gel, clear tar gel or just regular glue. This is PVA or Elmer's glue. But I've since discovered, so this is a, an archival product, not going to yellow. This will. So, and a lot of people, I, the reason I use this is one, it's really easy to get. A lot of people have glue. But if you want to, if you're, if you're concerned about yellowing, this over time could yellow your art, which is why 
the last week's demo with the napkin, I actually moved from using glue to using uh, matte medium. Uh, and by the way, tons of mediums work for, I mean, I, I, in fact, I, everything worked. I just want to not use the glue because there's a chance it's going to yellow. So I started experimenting with alternatives to the glue. So let me just show you the, the difference here. So this is basically what tar, clear tar gel is going to do. I don't know if you can see this, but the clear tar gel gives you a dimension that, that holds up once it dries. It's pretty amazing. I love clear tar gel. The problem is, is that it's pretty hard to apply. Um, you, don't, you don't have as much control that as you do with the glue. The glue is just so easy to apply. So I wanted something equal to the glue that wouldn't be hard to get. This is, not everybody wants to get this. So um, this is actually one done with glue and when it dries, it's almost completely flat. Whereas this actually holds its dimension. It'll still have that nice kind of like bubble of clear tar gel. The glue does not do that. So let me show you first how to use these. And the two products that I discovered work really, really well are gloss medium. And again, I put it in either a condiment bottle like this, or I love these things, these fine liners. This works incredible because you get really nice uh, skinny lines, or you can get little teeny dots with them, or you can just, I'm just showing you, or you can make more defined lines. So let's just do one with the fine liner, the gloss medium. Hopefully this hasn't clogged up on me. Let's see if I can make this bigger. So I, I have a penchant for dots. Um, the reason I love the gloss medium so much with this is that it, it's so liquidy that it comes out of the container really fast. So I can get a whole page of these dots in about 30 seconds. And it actually dries pretty fast too. Um, I do usually let it uh, dry overnight, but in an hour or two, it would probably be dry. And I've been hearing people have been putting them outside in the sun. And that is actually only like an hour dry time. So if you're gonna get a fine liner, which I adore these things, you just have to make sure you get the pin um, it's such a fine tip. You have to make sure that the tip goes back in there or it clogs up really fast. Okay, so that's the little dot one. But if I do it out of the condiment bottle, let me get another piece here. Um, this has a bigger hole. Now I could make a smaller hole, but um, I tend to have larger holes. Um, this just makes really big dots. <laughs> and I love big dots really fast. So I can do a whole page just, just in just a very short amount of time. So I'll just put these down. And of course, in Julia Child style, those of you who know Julia Child, she's a, a famous uh, chef in the United States. She's now deceased, but she's kind of like my idol. Don't ask me why. I don't like to cook. But she started late in life. That's why I love her so much. But she would always... For cooking, she would always do these demos where she would show you how to do it, and then voila, she would get it out of the stove. It's all ready. So I'm, I'm going to put this aside, but I want to show you where I can find a clean piece of paper. I want to show you the difference with the, um, this is the, the other version, the other product you can use is glazing medium. And I also put this in a small tube. So I could have put this in a condiment bottle. Um, I'm just so in love with the gloss medium that I'm probably not going to use this long term. And the only reason I'm not, they, they actually work the exact same. So if you've got glazing medium, it does the same work. The reason I don't like this as much is that it because it's so thick, it doesn't come out as fast. And I'm all about fast. So I have to use both hands to squeeze it out. It takes a little more efforting. I mean, it's not bad. So if you've got it, this product, it works good. It's also coming out milky. So you can probably, I'm thinking you probably can see that as like a milky consistency, but when it dries, it will be completely clear. And the end effect looks just like the clear tar gel, looks like the glue, except that it does hold the dimension. Actually, this is, you know, as long as I use two hands, it comes out pretty fast. So I'm just gonna 
close that. So let me show you the effect of this. <clears throat> so I've, of course, already have some done. And I think this one's the gloss. And I already pre-made up. Hold on, let me get the sign paint out here. So I made, uh, so for Collage Kickstart, as well as Collage Joy, um, I'm suggesting you create a color palette that's very limited. So my color palette for Kickstart was cool colors. And now I'm adding a, uh, a, a warm color to that palette, which is what I'm filming for um, Collage Joy. And I don't have enough oranges and reds. So that's why I'm using this color right now, because I need it. So this is a gloss. And it has really big blobs. Um, I did this very fast the other day. So you just paint this on. And you can paint it on full strength. So this is not, I could put it, I could do it watered down. Oh, I just realized I didn't get a wet cloth prepared. Oh boy. So you're going to have to, hold on one second. So I'm going to break my Julia Child's rule. So I'm going to take uh, this towel right here, and I'm just wetting it. So you're coming with me to the sink. <laughs> Luckily, I've got a, uh, my earphones on, so you can still hear me. Okay. So I've got a wet cloth, and I'm literally going to just wipe off the glue. And it comes off. You know, putting the paint on pretty thick um, I like because it'll stain more of the paper underneath. And it actually comes off incredibly easy as long as your uh, rag is wet. It uh, comes off. So, and I could even put a, a second coat of paint if I wanted to like shade that more, make it more orange or more red. I could do something else with it. So that's the gloss, which I just adore. Let's do... I have, oh, so this one is the glaze, and I would actually used the fine liner for this, so I'm just going to kind of quickly, I'm adding a little more paint to my thing here. It's obvious I didn't put enough paint down on my palette. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, boy, this has already got paint on it, so that makes it a little less effective because I'm actually smearing old paint on top of this, but it's still gonna come off. I was trying to avoid taking you to the sink a second time. Oops. Now, I wanted to say something about archivability here. So the products I've put on here, which is, this is the glaze, the product itself is archival. However, the paper isn't. Um, I use a lot of book pages for my art. And it's very, I've never even heard of a book <clears throat> that has, uh, you know, a book that you read that is acid free. So the, <clears throat> I love that. I think that's gorgeous. The paper itself is not archival. So I'm putting archival product on a non-archival paper, but I'm coating this multiple times. So I'm putting acrylic paint on it, which is archival. Um, I'm going to put a varnish at the end. I'll put a wax at the end. So I'm coating it so many times that, you know, we're not going to see yellowing with this. I mean, it'd be very unlikely. Now the backside, yes, because in fact, it's probably already yellowed now. I usually use old books. So, uh, you know, as much as I can, I want to use archival materials, but the book pages are not going to be. Now I'm going to try one more thing here. So this was actually a piece of collage, you know, a book that I made a collage on or a, um, a collage fodder. And this red isn't exactly the red I want to use for the palette that I'm doing for collage joy. So I thought, Maybe I could alter this. And by the way, I'm, I'm laying out a tiny bit of extra paint because I didn't put enough out here. Um, maybe I could, uh, I actually, you know, put the, uh, I think this is, it doesn't really matter. Glaze and gloss both work the same. So it doesn't really matter which one I used. So maybe I could just put a coat on here and make the colors 
match my color palette. So this is an experiment. I haven't done this before, but I am going to act. This is my project for the afternoon is to hold on one second. I'm going to see if I can, this is going to be a rough, <laughs> a rough towel. To, um, I want to get it wet. I'm ruining my Julia Child effect. Dang. I'm lucky that I've got a, um, a sink in my studio. Okay. Oh, wow. So this is kind of like, you know, you're seeing this for the first time with me because I had no idea how this was going to work. And it's interesting. Huh. So what I did was basically I've got now the red is in my color palette, which is lovely. And I've got these interesting marks where I, I laid down. But because uh, yellow doesn't show up that well, so we're not seeing any contrast. We're just seeing a contrast uh, with the red. <laughs> Okay, that was a fascinating experiment that you just went on with me. So, anyways, any questions? I'm taking you off the stand, by the way. I'm going to turn this around. Hello. Anyways, thank you all for coming week after week. Some of you are brand new. Some of you have been here from the very beginning. I'm grateful. And I'm grateful for all those of you who are tuning in later as well on the recording. Hope that you have a fabulous Tuesday. And please sign up for Collage Kickstart if you haven't. It's free, completely free. Someone asked me today if they have to give me a credit card. You don't have to do anything. This is completely free. The only thing you have to do is show up and have fun. That's the only requirement is just to experiment. So I hope that you'll take advantage of it. And uh, I'll see you in two weeks for Tune In Tuesday at 2. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for coming.